Hello guys, in this question, uh, a block of mass 4m and uh, it is placed on the top of a wedge of mass 20m. The length of the base of the wedge is given as L and initially the system was at rest. There is no friction present on any surface and we have released this block A from rest and we have to find out the distance by which this uh, wedge will move uh, at the time when this block A reaches to the bottom of the wedge. So let us uh, first of all write that the net force acting on this system will be zero because uh, there is no friction and nothing but I am talking about the x direction only obviously. So this is for x axis. Now therefore the momentum of the system and, and the mass moment in, is conserved in x axis and let us suppose that uh, during the course of the motion when A reaches the bottom of the wedge then the distance travelled by A in backward direction is x A and the distance travelled by the wedge in forward direction is x B. So uh, by balancing the mass moment we can write the equation as 4m into x a minus 20m into x b is equal to 0 which says that x a is equal to 5 x b. This is the first equation. Now we all know that uh, x a with respect to x b is x a plus x b because they both are moving in opposite direction and the distance by which this block A has been displaced with respect to the wedge is L because uh, the time in which it will move from top to bottom it will move by a distance of L in the backward direction with respect to the wedge. So XA plus XB is equal to L. So by substituting this value of uh, XA from equation 1 into equation 2 we know that 6XB is equal to L and XB is equal to L by 6. So this is the distance moved by this wedge in the direction, forward direction in the time when this block reaches to its bottom. Thank you. In this question, <coughs> there are two men, A and B, of the masses as shown are standing on a rough plane, rough block of mass 40 kg. The lower surface of this block which is touching the ground is frictionless and uh, the length of this block is 120 centimeters. Now <coughs> A and B starts to move in such a way such that they will meet eventually and uh, this block will also move due to the movement of A and B. It is also given that B uh, is standing in the middle of the plank initially and A is standing on the left end of the plank initially and uh, B is moving in such a way such that the um, displacement of B with respect to ground is zero. So in these kind of questions the first step which we should follow is uh, the assumption of the displacements in vector form. So let us assume the displacements and let us mark the x and y axis. This is x axis and this is y axis. So the displacement of A with respect to ground is let's suppose x A in forward direction which is positive x axis. Now the displacement of B is 0 because it is given that uh, the B is stationary with respect to ground. <coughs> and the displacement of plank can be assumed in either of the direction. So let us assume the displacement of plank in backward direction. So xp is equal to minus xp i cap. Okay, so this is the first step which we have to follow. Now the second step is uh, writing the equation of mass moment. We know that for a system, this for this system complete, the net external force is zero. So the sum of mass moment mi into xi is 0, i starts from 0 to n. The sum of this mass moment for this system will be 0 and therefore mass of A into xa plus mass of B into xb 
plus mass of C into XC is equal to 0 and mass of A is 40 X is X A I cap <coughs> plus mass of B is uh, 60 but X B is 0 so this is 0 plus X C mass of C is <coughs> 40 and X C is minus uh, X P I cap so this is minus X P I cap is equal to 0 so uh, we can say that x a is equal to x p from this equation okay so this is the first result now it is uh, also given that a and b will eventually meet so the distance between a and b will be traveled by both of them and this distance is 60 centimeters so <coughs> the displacement of a with respect to plank minus the displacement of B with respect to plank this is the relative equation is equal to 60 because they both have covered this displacement 60 so displacement of A with respect to plank is XA minus XP <coughs> and in vector form I can write that XA is XA I cap and we know that xa and xp are equal in magnitude so i am writing xp as xa but xp is minus xp i cap so this is minus xp i cap so xap <coughs> is equal to 2 xa i cap and xbp is xb minus xp so x b <coughs> p is equal to 0 minus x p is minus x p i cap so x b p is equal to plus x p i cap now we have to substitute these values in this equation second equation so 2xa i cap minus xp which is also equal to xa i cap is equal to 60 so xa is equal to <coughs> 60 so this is the equation which is uh, given that xa is equal to 60 we are assuming that <coughs> this 60 is also in the i cap direction okay so this is i cap so x a is equal to 60 now x p will be the displacement of plank p in the backward direction and we know that x a and x p are equal so this 60 <coughs> is also the displacement of plank so this is also equal to 60 so if this <coughs> men a is moving in the forward direction by a distance of 60 and plank is moving in the backward direction by a displacement of 60 then we can say that the final displacement of a with respect to plank will be x a minus x p in vector form and as they both are in opposite directions so x a p will be equal to 2xa which is equal to 120 centimeters which means to meet b a will travel a distance of 120 centimeter with respect to plank and therefore a will meet b on the other end of the plank this end so the correct answer uh, for the point where a and b will meet will be the c which is the right end of the plank now let's move on the next question in this question you can see that <coughs> there is a bigger sphere this one <coughs> whose radius is 6r and whose mass is 4m the coordinates of the center of this bigger sphere is l comma 0 now there is a small sphere uh, which is kept inside this bigger sphere in such a way such that this small sphere is touching this bigger sphere at this point 
the mass of this smaller sphere is m and its radius is r now we will release this smaller sphere and then we have to find out the coordinates of the center of this bigger sphere when this smaller sphere will uh, reach the other extreme of the bigger sphere now let us draw the diagram <coughs> of the bigger sphere when the smaller sphere will reach its other extreme so <coughs> this is the scenario when this <coughs> smaller sphere will reach the other extreme and let's suppose that let's suppose that bigger sphere x b is the distance moved by bigger sphere in the front direction and x s is the distance moved by the smaller sphere in the backward direction so we can say by balancing the mass movement that <coughs> the sum of the mass movement of both these spheres would be zero we have already discussed the things about mass movement therefore m is the mass of smaller sphere and m into x s will be equal to 4m into x b this is <coughs> the equation of mass movement and therefore we can say that x s will be equal to 4 x b this is the first relation now we know that initially the center of the smaller sphere was at this point and finally the center of the smaller sphere is at this point so from this point to this point the distance moved with respect to the bigger sphere is <coughs> this is r and this is r therefore this distance s would be equal to 10r because this complete distance is equal to 12r and uh, therefore this remaining distance s is equal to 10r so we know that the relative distance x relative <coughs> is equal to x s plus x b due to the fact that uh, the smaller sphere is moving in the backward direction and the bigger sphere is moving in the forward direction so x relative is equal to <coughs> uh, 4 xb i have substituting this value in this equation plus xb and this is equal to 10r so 5 xb is equal to 10r and xb is equal to 2r so this is the value of xb uh, which is the distance moved by the bigger sphere in front direction so the coordinates of the center of this bigger sphere the new coordinates would be the initial coordinate plus 2r so the correct option will be option number b because the initial coordinates were l comma 0 so we are adding 2r in x coordinate so the new coordinate would be l plus 2r comma 0 because y coordinate will still remain 0 now let's move on the next question <coughs> 